Hi, Mystery Recapped here. Today, I am going to explain a mystery drama film called Love Stoppage Time. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. Takashi Aiba is a student working hard to get into a medical university. He is in one of his classes when suddenly, at quarter past 12, everything around him stops moving. His classmates remain frozen in their seats, and so does his teacher. Takashi cannot believe his eyes. He looks around confused and starts to laugh, believing he is being pranked. Surely, Ashton Kutcher is waiting around the corner. He walks to the front of the class, unsettled by the silence. When he walks outside and sees the entire school is frozen, he realizes it is not a prank. Somehow, time has stopped for everyone, except for him. Takashi gets on his bicycle and rides to the nearby park. As he travels further, he registers he might be the only person who can move. He stops after seeing droplets of water frozen in a water fountain. When he tries to touch it, the water falls all over him. From the other side of the pond, a girl laughs at him, revealing that she can also move. Takashi is about to call her, but he suddenly appears back in the class, where he was before time froze. He is completely dry, as if he had never gotten in the pond. Takashi is shocked at the experience but cannot tell anyone because no one would believe him. That night, he returns home, still thinking about the strange events of the day. He asks his father about his day but doesn't get any answers. Takashi's father is disappointed in him because he was unsuccessful in getting into his desired university. The following day, at 12.15 pm, he is in the library. He bumps into a guy and sees that the book he dropped has frozen mid-air. Realizing that it is happening again, he runs to the park to meet the girl from yesterday. When he doesn't find her there, he goes to her school that he recognizes from the uniform she was wearing. After looking for a few minutes, he finds her lying down in the school's garden. He wakes her up, but the girl thinks he is a pervert. Wrong, Takashi is a pervert who can stop time. Takashi apologizes and claims that he looked for her because he felt alone. After finding out they are the only ones who can move, she agrees to accompany him. The pair talks about the time stopping but has no clue what is causing it and why they are the ones who can move. All of a sudden, the girl notices a driver has fallen asleep and is about to drive into some children crossing the road. She tries to wake him up but to no avail. Takashi knows, no matter what they do to stop him, things will go back to how they were after the time is reset. Hence, he looks for the driver's number in the car and remembers it. As soon as the time resets, he calls him, hoping to wake the man up. Following that, he runs to the location and sees that the children are safe. The girl also arrives there and praises his quick thinking. They promise to meet again tomorrow. Before leaving, the girl tells him that her name is Tokine Shinomaya. The next day, they meet at the park again. Shinomaya is drawing a sketch, which Takashi thinks is useless because it will disappear when time resets. Still, Shinomaya believes that the picture will be embedded in her mind, so it doesn't matter. The two then go on a bike ride through the city and end up in a field. As they talk, they name the pausing of the time, Lost Time. Takashi wants to spend more time with her but is too shy to ask her out. Shinomaya senses this and says that they should meet the next day and go on a date. Later that day, Takashi is cooking while singing, clearly in a good mood. However, it changes when he notices his father, Saiji, behind him. As they talk, we find out that Takashi's mother died of an illness when he was nine, but Saiji didn't come to visit her in the hospital. Ever since then, their relationship hasn't been the same. The following day, Shinomaya and Takashi meet at the park for their date. She claims she wants to play on the trampoline because she is embarrassed to do it when people are watching. Takashi watches her play like a child and cannot help but smile. Following that, he lays out the food he has cooked for her. At first, Shinomaya hesitates to eat it, saying that she is on a diet. Takashi reminds her that after the lost time is over, she will go back to being hungry so she can eat as much as she wants. The two enjoy the food together while talking about different things. Eventually, they get into an argument when Takashi says he is giving up on his dreams. Shinomaya calls him lazy, making him walk away from her. He accidentally pushes her to the ground when suddenly, the time restarts. Somewhere else in a hospital, Dr. Asami walks into a room to his sick wife. She has been sick for several years and the chances of her getting well are low. Like Shinomaya, 
She also loves to sketch. Asami takes care of her dearly, but she feels like she is a burden to him. The following day, Takashi is in his room, reading manga, when the time stops again. He runs to the park and sees Shinomaya waiting for him. Both of them apologize to each other and reconcile. They decide to meet at his home the following day. Takashi tells her that his goal in life is to be a doctor. They go for a bicycle ride and end up in the same field again. Takashi moves forward to kiss her, but the time resets just then, and he ends up back in his room. In the meantime, Asami and his wife's relationship takes a turn when she says she doesn't want to be with him anymore. He is shocked and asks her why, even though he knows the reason. She tells him that she is being transferred to a hospice healthcare place tomorrow and wants to live however she wants for the time she has left. Asami tries to reason with her, but she dismisses him. The next day, Shinomaya knocks on Takashi's door for their date. She is wearing a beautiful dress that leaves him speechless. He welcomes her in and compliments her, which makes Shinomaya blush. He has prepared several dishes for them that excite her. Before sitting down to eat, he gives her a pair of fancy chopsticks as a gift. The two enjoy the food in silence. Later, Takashi asks Shinomaya what she plans to be in the future. She seems to avoid the question and talks about a time capsule that she buried when she was little. The capsule contained papers where she had written her dreams and aspirations, but she doesn't remember them now. Takashi suggests they dig it up, but it turns out that the field is someone's front yard now. After the meal, they enjoy a chocolate cake together. Takashi invites her to a firework display that night, but she claims that she cannot see him anymore. A shocked Takashi asks her why, but the time resets and he never gets to know the answer. The following day, when time freezes again, he looks all around for her but cannot find her. Later, he asks her classmates, who inform him that she is in the hospital, being treated for a deadly disease. Takashi quickly runs to the hospital and finds out that she has a condition called Wilson's disease. The chances of her survival are low because only a liver transplant can save her. All of her family have been tested, but none of their liver is a match to her. Moreover, to perform the transplant, the donor has to be a family member, so she has lost hope for survival. She also reveals that the day she found out that she won't get a donor was also the day the lost time started. Takashi insists he will take a test to see if his liver matches hers, but Shinomaya thinks it is fruitless. When he doesn't back off, she tells him she only has six months to live, so she doesn't want to see him anymore. At home, Takashi googles Wilson's disease and reads several articles about it. He finds out that a person suffering from the disease isn't allowed to eat chocolate, shrimp, and seaweed, everything that he had been feeding her until now. Shinomaya was able to enjoy the food she liked when she was with him. After finding this out, he rushes to the hospital again. He walks into Dr. Asami and asks him to save her at any cost. To his surprise, the doctor asks him if time stops for them as well. They go to the rooftop to talk about the matter. It is then revealed that Asami and his wife also went through the same experience that Takashi and Shinomaya are. Asami's wife was suffering from a terminal disease that needed a liver transplant. Suddenly, the two started to experience lost time and met each other. It was almost like God's way of telling them that their livers matched and Asami could help her survive. Since both pairs' stories are very similar, he believes that Takashi's liver will also be a match to Shinomaya. However, for a living transplant, there are several rules that need to be followed. First of all, the donor must be the recipient's relative. This can be managed if the two get married. But still, Takashi cannot donate organs before the age of 20. Their last chance would be to hope that Shinomaya survives for one more year until he can legally donate his liver. But the doctor claims that she can hardly survive for six months at the rate her health is currently deteriorating. Following the interaction with Asami, Takashi sits beside Shinomaya, looking through her sketchbook. All of her sketches are of the memories they made together, like the water fountain where they first saw each other and the lunchbox that he made for her. But what catches his attention is a sketch of himself. Takashi is a narcissist. When Takashi returns home that night, he asks his father, Saiji, how his mother was able to survive for more time than the doctors had predicted. He is informed that she used to say she won't die before Saiji fulfilled his dream to construct a bridge. She held on for a few months, but sadly, couldn't see the finished product. During her death, Saiji was at the construction site, trying to complete it quickly because it was the only thing he could do for her. Hearing this, Takashi finally forgives his father for not being there when she passed away. 
The next day, when time freezes, he goes to the house where Shinomaya had buried her time capsule. He has made it his mission to find the box no matter what. He digs different areas of the yard each day and keeps track using a map. After digging for several days, he finally finds the box and runs to the hospital to give it to her. Shinomaya says she shouldn't have worked that hard, but she is secretly delighted to have the box back. On looking through it, she finds drawings of her as a baker, a florist, and so on. Takashi also shows her the sheet that says his liver matches hers, which means they met for a reason. To her surprise, he kneels down and asks her to marry him. Shinomaya cries, overwhelmed by the gesture, but Takashi promises to save her. Asami has talked to the ethics community of the hospital, who allow Takashi to donate under the consent of his parents. He asks permission from his father, urging him to sign the consent papers. He claims that only 40% of his liver will be used, so he will only suffer from mild discomfort. But if it means saving Shinomaya's life, he is willing to do anything. Still, Saiji doesn't permit him to make the reckless decision. The following day is the day Takashi and Shinomaya get married. The hospital is being decorated for the ceremony. Takashi puts two watches on a platform as a replacement for their wedding rings. Asami comments that he feels like he is going back in time because his wedding was very similar. To Takashi's surprise, his father arrives at the hospital with signed papers, happy that his son has made a decision to save someone's life. However, the story takes a turn when Takashi finds Shinomaya unconscious in her hospital room. She is taken to the ICU immediately, but the doctors can do nothing as she goes into a coma. Takashi finds a letter addressed to him where Shinomaya thanks him for making her life better. She also expresses her love for him for the first time in the letter. When the clock hits 12.15, the time doesn't pause. Takashi believes that this means Shinomaya has passed away, but the doctor informs him that there is still a chance. Cut to a few weeks later. Takashi wakes up on a hospital bed next to Shinomaya after the organ transplant. They both are alive and well. The couple holds hands, thankful for their health. Somewhere else, Asami and his wife are watching the sea. Asami makes her understand that she is not a burden on him. In fact, she makes his life better. The two reconcile, and he assures her he will find a way for them to be together again. In the final scene, we see Takashi and Shinomaya having lunch at the park on Shinomaya's 17th birthday. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.